there and welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review today I'm back with my favorite fountain pen company pen BBS with my new pen BBS 480 cedar my very first fountain pen was this model 380 cedar and when this 480 became available it had the same cedar finish so I pounced on it immediately I know a lot of things get lost in translation between English and Chinese and therefore some of the names of the colors and finishes leave much to be desired for those of us who know the varieties of wood like cedar this is nothing like cedar and it doesn't really matter because this finish is remarkable you have to have it in your hand to truly appreciate it I can see why they wanted to name it after a light wood with grain because it does have some beautiful striations to it but there's more to it than that other pen BBS finishes suffer from the same weak finish names like this 308 in milky white and on video and photos you might think it is as dull and boring as milky white but it should be named alabaster or ivory because of its luster and depth so I'm going to look at this new pen which is now my third 480 I think this is the best fountain pen for the money on the market today in fact I'll go further than that and say that pen BBS is the finest most innovative fountain pen maker today for the money in addition to reviewing this particular 480 I want to discuss why I feel pen BBS surpasses everyone else in the affordable fountain pen market and why I think they are so much better than moon man in Chinese fountain pens so join me for that exciting debate with myself right now <music> Now the first pen I see is a 480 and this 480 I ordered a few days before the 487s went on sale and asked Biney if she would put it aside for me so I can combine shipping and she very kindly did that she does that if you request and it's a good idea to do that and this is a very special 480 I hopped all over it when I saw it Mother pus bucket. this is in the color number zero one which is cedar and it almost matches my 308 in cedar only the 308 has gold trim this was my first pen BBS pen and now I have a 480 which I adore this 480 model and it has that lovely fine nib so I will be doing a review of the 480 cedar and comparing it to my very first pen BBS and looking at the differences between the 480 model and the 308 model so I'll give you three guesses on what I want to do today oh crap wrong on all counts what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample yeah that's what I want to do after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen and as I mentioned in the introduction I want to discuss why I feel that pen BBS is the leader in affordable quality fountain pens and why they are better than arguably most other Chinese pen manufacturers including moon man the pen BBS 480 cedar represents the 29th pen BBS fountain pen that I purchased since this first 308 that I purchased almost a year and a half ago let me lay out the case for pen BBS as the best fountain pen for the money on the market if you wish to skip to the pen review itself just use the YouTube chapters feature just below there to skip this part so I'm going to argue the case for pen BBS based on five criteria number one price and value for the money number two 
a variety of models. Number three, variety and quality of finishes. Four, overall quality in writing and manufacturing. And C, innovation, new models and filling systems. So, first one, A, price. The least expensive Penn BBS models are the 322 Marshmallow and the 491 Piston Filler at around six bucks a piece. And the most expensive model is currently the 355 Bulk Filler with the Autumn Finish at $45.99. But generally, the turned acrylic pens with the number six size steel nibs are between $13.99 for the 308 in a base finish to the 355 Autumn at $45.99. I'd like to have someone show me where you can find a turned acrylic fountain pen with a number six size steel nib that is able to be used as an eyedropper and is available in dozens of different finishes other than Pen BBS. In purchasing 29 Pen BBS pens in a little more than a year, I found 99% have written perfectly well right out of the box. And B, models. Not only do they make inexpensive quality fountain pens, they make a large variety of models. Currently there are 16 different models available on the Etsy site which doesn't include the 494 piston filler that can be purchased on eBay. And four finishes. In addition to the 16 different models, Pen BBS has a huge array of different acrylics. I can't count them all but there are around a hundred of them currently. Not all the finishes are available all the time as they tend to make them in batches and only make them in hundreds rather than thousands of pieces. So when you see a finish you like, you'd better buy it or it's gone. And five, quality. With the varieties of models and finishes at very affordable prices, you might expect the quality of the writing and manufacturing would be lacking or suspect. Well, you'd be wrong. These are extremely well-built fountain pens. The nibs are number six size and they're in nib units that unscrew easily and the nibs are easily swapped with other nib makers from Yovo to Bach to Schmidt and etc. I can put this 480 Galaxy up against my Leonardo Ferrore and the fit and finish and writing quality is the same. There are no flaws and the acrylics are both stunning. This 480 was around $40 and this Ferrore was around $230. Plus, you can buy spare parts in Pen BBS spare parts packs that have nib collars, feeds, piston parts, and O-rings for only eight bucks to keep your pens maintained. In my 29 pens, I've only had one issue. When I dropped my 456 vacuum filler and it cracked. I bought a new barrel for it from Pen BBS for eight bucks. And C. No, I think we're up to F. And F, innovation. This is where I'm going to compare Pen BBS with another Chinese maker people love to hate, Moon Man. Yes, Moon Man is coming up with new models all the time, and they are constantly developing new things. Here are a few of their new models from last year. The Moon Man M600S, which is a Parker clone. The Moon Man M800, which is a Leonardo clone. Well, copy not even a clone it's a copy the moon man t2 which is a stipula clone this new m1000 which is a mont blanc clone and a p135 another mont blanc clone which i will have shortly and what is the common thing among moon man's new models is it innovation well apart from the spring filler in the t2 absolutely not it is copying that's what's common I wish Moon Man would put their expertise at copying other people's ideas into coming up with their own takes on things. That would be wonderful. Conversely, here are some new things from Pen BBS in the last two years or so. The Pen BBS 491, the 492 and 487 magnetic piston fillers, the 500 spring filler, the 355 bulk filler, the 456 vacuum filler, and the 480 cartridge converter and eyedropper. There isn't a clone in the bunch. Send in the clone! Huh? 
If you can point me to a pen manufacturer that has this variety of quality models and acrylic finishes with number six size swappable nibs at price points under $50 US, I would like to hear about it. I know people have pointed me towards fountain pen revolution pens made in India, but my horrid experience with an FPR Himalayan V2 has me gun shy about that brand. Now that I've gushed about my appreciation of pen BBS, let's look at my latest acquisition, the 480 Cedar. The 480 is actually a remodel of a previous model, the pen BBS 349, which had metal threads on the section and a ball style clip. I like to think of the 480 as a refinement of the 308 or a 308 in a torpedo shape rather than this cigar shape. It is closer in shape to the Parker Balance, which this is a Wingsong 626 clone of the Parker Balance, and you can see that torpedo shape. From the top, we see a pointed end to the cap and a chrome sword-shaped clip that extends directly out of the cap with no retaining ring like the 308 has. While we're close up here, let's examine this cedar finish and you'll see why I love it so much and why cedar is actually not an adequate name to describe it. There are striations of opaque ivory and translucent light gold acrylic with a really nice sparkle to it. I don't know what might be a better name for this than cedar. Perhaps, I don't know, tusk or ivory bone or something like that. The cap tapers up until we get to a thin cap band that has two grooves and pen BBS and Shanghai and 480 stamped into it. Then there is an extended cap acrylic that tapers down to a very small step down to the barrel. And the barrel is straight to about here where it tapers in a long curve to the pointed end. The cap unscrews with one and a half turns to reveal a tapering section made of the same acrylic with a chrome band at the bottom and a small lip towards the number six size chrome steel nib. Let's get a closer look at the nib. This is one of my beloved Mini Fude Pen BBS fine steel nibs. It has the Pen BBS scroll work with Pen BBS since 2005, F for fine, and China. And here is the plastic feed. The nib and the feed unscrew as part of this nib assembly. I want to show you here just how easy this is to remove and swap these nibs. I have this number six size fully wen nib with a broad tip that I bought to experiment with. And I have from my pen parts bag this collar and feed assembly uh, complete with o-rings. And all I have to do is line up the nib and slide it into the collar. Then all I have to do is screw it back into the section just like that. Make sure it's aligned and then put the barrel back on and we're good to go. I'm going to put the fine nib back in for the writing sample and then swap the two nib assemblies during the writing sample to see how this broad nib writes. And there we go with the fine nib back in place. So the section unscrews to reveal an included pen BBS cartridge converter, but the pen will take Parker short cartridges as well. Not Parker longs, not Lamy longs, just Parker shorts. There is an O-ring right here at the bottom of the section just above the threads that allows you to eyedropper this pen. I will warn that this cedar finish is prone to ink staining so be prepared to have the pen start to look like the color of ink you use. The cap posts deeply and securely and much better than the 308. Now the 308 posts 
but it's not quite as secure and certainly not as sleek and not as balanced as the 480. This pen is very sleek and balanced in the hand, both posted or unposted. The section is long and comfortable. The pen is light in the hand and comfortable for long writing sessions. This pen retails for $17.99 US in the base finishes and surprisingly this cedar finish is considered one of the base finishes. In fact it's finish number one. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Pen BBS 480 Cedar with a Pen BBS 308, a Leonardo Furore Salt, a Wing Sung 626, and a Platinum President. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And let's look at some measurements, and then I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pen BBS 480 Cedar. And it is a fine steel nib. And the ink today is Leonardo Blue. Here is the swatch for the Leonardo Blue. I wish they had actually come up with a better name for this than just Leonardo Blue. It really is quite a lovely aquamarine turquoise kind of blue, uh, which is a nice match with Roshizuku Kanpeki and Daimin Asa Blue. I really am becoming quite fond of this ink. And let's check the wetness. As you can see, it's decently wet. This is right out of the box. Most Pen BBS fine nibs write fairly dry right out of the box. In fact, Biney, the Etsy shopkeeper, has said they do this on purpose. But this one is nicely wet and I haven't had to do anything to it. As to line variation, that is no pressure. There's a little bit of pressure. There is none to be had. This is very stiff. But that slightly upturned uh, nib, uh, the Mini Fude, just naturally gives you some interesting line variation. And this is very smooth. Right out of the box. This I've not done anything to this nib. This could be one of the smoothest nibs I've ever experienced from Pen BBS of the 29. Um, this one could actually be called number 30 because I got this from a friend. Uh, and this is in my Moonman M800. And so far, this is the best Pen BBS fine nib that I own. And this is coming in as a close second. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out as 0.5 millimeters or a Western fine and a Japanese between a fine and a medium. There's a little bit of drag in that direction. I might give it a little bit of a tweak on some micro mesh. But 
this is lovely and wet and smooth. And for our quote, and for some reverse writing, that is very scratchy. It's actually writing. But boy, I would do that. And some quick writing. This little skip over here was just I didn't have the pen rotated properly. That feed keeps up very, very nicely. Now I want to actually take that nib assembly out of that pen. And here is the fully one broad nib back in the pen. And you can see that is a broad. So that's just a standard number six. I think I paid three bucks for it, something like that on eBay. And that's no tuning or anything. Easy swap. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, first I'm going to direct you to a video where I compared a number of models of Pen BBS that were all amber as a cat finishes. I had gone into that experiment where I tried to empirically determine which were the best models of Pen BBS pens, expecting the 308 to be the best bang for your buck model of the lineup. I surprised myself by determining that it was actually the 480 and not the 308. The 308 is the least expensive number six size nib turned acrylic quality fountain pen out there. However, it has a couple of drawbacks that this 480 has actually solved. It doesn't post as well as the 480 does, and it has an issue with cap clearance that keeps you from being able to swap many nibs into that pen. The 480 doesn't have a cap clearance problem. And for another four bucks, I think this sleeker, more balanced model 480 is worth the money and still under $20 US. This, as I said, is my 29th Pen BBS steel nib. More if you count pens I've purchased for others. I can't think of one that has failed to write out of the box. About 50% of them have been on the dry side out of the box. Too small and dry. Oh, I wouldn't say that. But it's actually just a simple task to make them write wetter. Just giving it a slight push with a few downstrokes actually does it most of the time. But this one, meaning this one, was just fine right out of the box. And what do I not like so much about this pen? Well, there are two things about this pen, this one in particular. The first is this chrome ring right here. Every time I took this off, I did it a few times for this video. This ring came disengaged. I mean, today's been a terrible day. Got up this morning, picked up my shirt, a button fell off. In a briefcase, the handle fell off. I'm afraid to go to the bathroom. <laughs> now, I've looked at my other 480s, and none of them have this issue. So that's a bit odd. So I just have to be careful not to lose that one. The second is, and I've had that issue in swapping back and forth and getting ink into that section, is how easily stained this particular finish gets uh, with ink. My Ferrore Salt has the same issue. These light colored acrylics, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's lightly blue on the inside there. I have to be vigilant about keeping that clean, especially if the nib ever burps a little bit into that cap. I have to keep it clean. Just something to beware of in these light colored, semi-translucent uh, acrylic materials. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made 
です。